introduce the topic of health care. Uh, as you've heard made mention of by the nominees, we do face an aging population in much need of long-term long -term health care facilities to be able to support them when we get to that stage. But we also have a portion of our population that's still quite young. And for our community to grow, we need to be able to support those people as well. So as we've seen in Jim's time as our MVP, each area of the province and each area of this riding has its own health care concerns. In the riding of SDG, we've had the three hospital expansions. We've had the health clinics brought to the riding. We continue to grow that way. We've had long-term care facilities. We have a, a tertiary care facility in town now as well, thanks to the work of Donald and Jim, but other people that are actually within this gathering tonight. Thank you. So continuing to build on these successes in a way that supports our entire population, whether it be the elderly, whether it be the infants that are coming along in the first 0 to 18 months that need support, or whether it be the people my age and your age that are in the middle. What we'd like to hear now from the nominees up front is, what do you see as the top three priorities for strengthening health care services in the storm on the MS and so on Gary Ray? And we'll start this time with Ben Center. Healthcare is a um, topic that's discussed an awful lot around my house. My wife is a registered nurse. She worked um, in, in our travels across the country. She worked at uh, one of the foremost cancer care centers in uh, North America, in Edmonton, at the Cross Cancer Institute. She worked uh, at Gary Memorial Hospital, where a few people I know in this room have been to in the past. And she works uh, currently at the uh, Cornwall Hospice. And um, she's constantly telling me about health care and the need to address so many areas of health care. One of the big things that I think that uh, the government has done is they've looked at health promotion. Health promotion. Now, I'm not the role model for health promotion. I'm probably the textbook for, uh, model for Mr. Before and all those fitness acts. Uh, so. <laughs> Well, that's the truth. <laughs> but look, the investment in health promotion goes a long way to reducing our health care costs. If we can implement a healthy lifestyle mindset within ourselves, we are going to live a more active, healthy life. We can save up to $11 billion on our health care by addressing disease or addressing issues that are basically induced by our own way, or our own habits, our own lifestyles. So lifestyle improvement can go an awful long way to a longer, healthier, happier life, plus reduce the cost of our health care system. Pat made mention of it briefly. We talked about in the early hours in which uh, uh, families come together and promoting it right from that very start, and that working with uh, health uh, professionals coming into the community and having them uh, coach new mothers and address a number of issues with new mothers goes a long way to setting them on the right path. At the same time, we can see it within our education system. Getting back to a system of uh, physical education and health styles and that stuff. I also always questioned when I was a school board trustee, the absence of the public health nurse within the school. It became something like the school is really a hub for a whole number of things. And if you can have those services within the school, you can help address a number of these issues in such a way that you're making positive movement. In areas such as health care, if you have a nurse that can talk with students about uh, various disease, um, uh, you know, um, helping themselves with regards to the care of a common cold, it doesn't become a flu outbreak or a cold outbreak within the class, Time's not lost from uh, education. At the same time, um, you have, as I said, physical education, physical training and that. If you have people that are made aware of the advantages of uh, leading a healthier lifestyle and that. It's all part of the education and we seem to have stepped away from it. We seem to have taken so much for granted with regards to this is great, this is what I like doing 
and we don't think about what we're eating and how it implements or and affects us within our, our health. And those are some of the things that we have to look at. As I say, there is substantial savings, there's substantial money that can be recovered in our health care costs just by trying to move more closely to a healthier lifestyle and promoting it as such, a healthy lifestyle for a healthy interior.